So now I'm going to have one more check before we get to the real fun stuff. And I just want to make sure that there is data. All right. So this is just a simple if condition. And this just makes sure that there was data that was received. And, you know, it wasn't just null. Maybe they hit enter by mistake and send us, you know, some blank data, whatever. So basically, whenever we receive data and it's not a change directory command, then it must be something like, let me, then it must be something like dir or, you know, echo or, you know, echo, make a file, whatever. So basically, we're just going to take that straight out command and run it just like we were running it in a terminal. How do we do that? Well, for that command, what we can do is we can actually write subprocess p open, and this is essentially going to open up a process. So that's what this stands for. And what this means is basically run a command just like you would in the terminal. So the first thing it needs is the actual command. And remember, it's in bytes now when it comes across a network, and we need to convert it to a string because that's what this function takes right here. So if you just write data and not any numbers here because we're running the entire thing and you just decode it as a normal string, then it's gonna give you your string. And now these are just some optional parameters. For shell, we can have true. And for hackers, they probably wouldn't wanna show the, sh the shell, but we'll just keep it there for, I don't know, why not? And now, I'm just going to pipe everything to the standard stream. So basically, all of our input, our errors, our output, all go into the basic stream, your standard input output. So I just do std out. So process.pipe. And let's do standard error. And too lazy to type this. So. So process pipe, oh, MG, are you freaking kidding me? I'm getting rid of all my friends immediately. STD in sub process pipe. So again, this is just kind of housekeeping. All it does is it takes any output and pipes it out to the standard stream. So we get all the information that you would if you were just typing it into a terminal from that computer itself. So this process one runs right here. And then after it runs, just like any process like DIR, we have some output, the results of the command. So for this output, I actually want to do two things with it. By default, it's just bytes, but I also want a byte version of this and a string version of this. Now I want a byte version because that's what we're going to have to send back to the server. And I want a string version because then if we ever just want to print it out to the client, I don't know, maybe we're helping a friend out in Texas and we want them to follow along with what we're doing, then we need the string version of it. So I'll say output bytes and set this equal to command std out read std error and read. All right. So this is going to be the bytes version of it, basically the output of whatever command we just ran. And now, how am I supposed to do that? I'll name it this. All right, so this is gonna be the string version of it. So a really easy way to do this is if we just take the bytes and convert it to a string like before, and we'll just do UTF-8 encoding, and this means plain old basic string. Don't do anything weird with it. So now we have a byte version of the results and a string version of the results. And remember, so we can take the bytes and actually let me do it this way. It's probably going to be a little bit cleaner. So string dot encode and we'll do output string and I'll show you guys something really cool. So basically what we're going to do is not only are we going to send them back the results, but we also want to send them back this right here the current working directory. Because whenever you run a command in your terminal, 
or command line, it doesn't just print out the result and your cursor blinks at the bottom. It actually says what directory you are currently in. So then not only the user can see the results of their commands, but they can also see exactly where they're looking at. So how do we do that? Well, we're just gonna output the string like that, and then we're gonna convert to a string the os.c right there, get current working directory. So what this is, is a function that returns whatever directory you are currently in right here, C users Bucky. Now, the one thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't throw in this little greater than sign. So we actually have to write that ourselves. So now let's see. So I'm gonna write greater than space and then it's gonna send us back this, print out our current working directory, working directory and our cursor is gonna be in the proper space. Now this is actually optional if you wanna output this. If you know, you're know you like some hacker, you probably wouldn't wanna do this, but if you do, then the results of what you're doing are gonna print out on the client's machine. So there you go. It's probably nice that they know what the heck is going on. And uh, after this, I'll just write close connection. All right, so whenever this breaks right here, what we can do is S close, and it just closes the socket or the connection. All right, now if everything looks good, what we can do now is this. This program is ready to go. So remember, the first thing you need to do is you need to start server.py. Since these are essentially two different programs that are gonna be running on two different computers, I'm just testing them on my computer right now. So this is server.py, it's running, and it says, all right, our socket is bound to the port, I'm good to go, and now what you wanna do is run client. Dot .py. So this client, once I run that, look back on our server. It says connection has been established with the IP address. And again, since the client's on our own machine, then it just gives it that um, IP address and port 58858. And that is because that was actually up to the computer what port it wanted to reserve. So there you go. And check this out. So from the server, and remember, this isn't, this basically is not the client's machine. This can be you from anywhere you want. Type in any command like dir. Now hit enter and check this out. See what it did is it actually went to the client and the client ran dir. So that's why in the client's machine, it printed out the directory pretty cool. So now what I can do is write something like echo bacon, hit enter, and for the client, <laughs> look at that, it prints out bacon. So pretty stinking awesome. Basically, that's how it's gonna work. And in the next video, if you guys are like, would this work in real life? I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set it up on an actual server, and we're gonna be connecting to that. It's super easy. So yeah, this is pretty awesome already. But I'll see you guys in the next video. It's gonna be pretty cool.